<sighs> All right. Here we go. Uh, gonna get started in just a minute, but figured I'd start up the stream. <laughs> Okay. Hey folks. Uh, I am going to show you Dream Quest. I'm excited because Dream Quest is one of my favorite games ever. Um, I'm going to be playing with Sound Off because sound doesn't really matter all that much. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, Dream Quest came out in 2014. Uh, it's a collectible card game slash roguelike dungeon crawler um, and it's really really hard uh, I like to play it on velociraptor mode so I'm just gonna go ahead and change that right now um, and Dream Quest has a kind of a, a, a reputation as being a really ugly game it's I agree it's kind of ugly but I find it charming. Uh, in fact, uh, it was made mostly by one guy, uh, Peter Whalen, and uh, some of the artwork is by his daughter, uh, and I guess his son, to Andrew, Andrew Whalen, I'm not sure. But um, uh, yeah, there is, I don't know, I find it charming. I like it. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, this is, I'm starting with a clean profile here. So this is what happens when you load up Dream Quest for the first time. Hello. Hello, people in the chat. Um, so I'm going to hit play here. Uh, when we start out, we get four classes to pick from. Uh, priest, Thief, Warrior, and Wizard. I'm going to start off as Warrior because that's the sort of most um, straightforward class, as you might guess. Uh, so I'm going to choose Warrior here. And there's this story um, it's kind of charming, but I'm going to skip over it uh, because I usually skip over it every single time. The point is, you're in a dungeon. Ta-da! Uh, so this is the screen. Uh, you, you've got this dungeon grid here. you got a little procedurally generated name. Uh, and uh, uh, your, your level is here. You have your hit points, um, your magic points, which aren't going to matter too much for us playing a warrior. Um, and this icon over here under your portrait uh, shows you what your current card deck looks like. So there are multiple kinds of cards. As a warrior, you only start out with attack cards, which are red, and, uh, and one equipment card, which is uh, in brown over here on the right. Um, and, uh, and then we have these stats, uh, which include uh, gold, um, overall magic, points. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the stats on the right are, are hit points and experience. Uh, and then we've got gold and uh, number of actions per turn. Actions are like a special resource. Uh, and then the number of cards in our hand, which starts as two. And then we have this button smash here, which isn't very well explained, but that's okay. I'm just going to um, uh, start by walking around this dungeon and seeing what's here. Um, so we've run into some enemies. Uh, we've got a level 2 Asuri Tracker, uh, some kind of cat person. We've got a Vampire Bat, level 1, and a Wyvern at level 1. Now the first thing I usually do is I explore as much of the dungeon as possible until I uh, have to fight a monster. So right now I, I run into the boss of the level. It's this level 4 Genie here. Um, 
and you can walk over most of these tiles. If I walk on the little crosses, I gain health back. I don't want to really use up those resources until I've lost some health, but this anvil here is a special place that I can um, I get a free upgrade to one of my cards. Uh, so I could upgrade one of my level 2 attacks to, um, to level 3, or upgrade a level 1 attack to level 2. I'm just going to upgrade a level 1. Uh, and then I'm going to attack uh, this bat to start with. So we're going to fight. You're now in combat with a monster. Okay. So um, I have two cards in my hand. I have ten cards in my deck total. Uh, and I'm fighting this bat here. The bat has four hit points. So I'm just going to start by playing a level two attack. And that hits him for two. And a level one. So now he's down to one out of four hit points. Uh, fine. Pretty straightforward. He just played... A card. This happens a lot. Uh, a card plays and you have no idea what just happened. So you kind of have to load up the card from the discard pile and take a look. He did a vampire bite on me, which deals two damage and gets two health back. And you can see right there that he's back up to three health from one. So I'm going to hit him once again. And now I'm going to play my equipment card. Um, this equipment card deals one damage for every two attack cards I play in a turn but it only is activated now that I've played it. So my turn's over. He just attacked me for one point, and I'm going to hit him for two. In theory, that triggers the sword as well, but it's not going to um, matter this time because I killed him. Uh, and I found two gold and gained one experience point. And now I can move around a little more through the dungeon. Um, I meet this goblin hoarder guy here, and... Uh, uh, and then there are these shops uh, that I can look at. I don't have hardly any gold right now, but in shops you can buy upgrades and also new cards for your deck. Um, one of the most important things to know about this game is that you don't want to add a bad card to your deck. Um, a lot of this game is about, uh, to, is about deck control. Um, it's really good to get rid of cards you don't necessarily want. Like if I could delete four of those level one attack cards from my deck, um, suddenly most of my attack cards will be level two plus. So that would be like hugely good for me. Um, I'm not gonna buy anything yet because I don't have the money for it anyway. I'm gonna attack this other level one monster, this uh, wyvern here. Uh, oh, and I got lucky. I drew two attacks uh, at level two. And, um, uh, and I'm going to hit, uh, hit him twice and kill him straight up. And uh, yeah, so this is a deck building game. Uh, this is uh, very much like Dominion or, or something else like that, um, combined with a little roguelike and some unlock mechanics. So, okay, uh, I'm level two. Uh, I have... I can choose between two different cards to add to my deck now. I have to add one or the other. Um, uh, in this case, uh, I can look. I've got Slash here, which deals two damage and draws a new card. And I've got Stone Skin, which gives me damage reduction two until my next turn. It doesn't really explain it that well, but damage reduction two reduces any damage you get by two points. So um, uh, if I... But that's per attack. So if someone hit me with a with two level two attacks, um, I would take zero damage during that turn that I had stone skin on. So I'm gonna do that because I want to get some, um, some defensive powers in my hand. And there's a treasure chest now. Um, little words on here, I almost never read them. Uh, and then I've got this, there's this prayer of violence. Prayer cards aren't super great for a warrior player, so I'm actually gonna not, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna leave that here. I could come back to it later and pick it up if I felt like I really needed it. Um, and now I have 18 maximum hit points instead of um, uh, 15. So um, I'm going to fight this Asuri Tracker now that we're both level two. Um, the Asuri Tracker has a couple of special powers. Um, he prevents the next card played by me from having an effect, so only my second card will affect him. And, um, and also, right, he, yeah, he counters the first card each turn. So basically, that card does nothing, and then I attack him. So he might wipe the walls with me here, uh, but 
Uh, I'm going to throw away that level one attack. Hit. Use stone skin here. And then none of that's going to hurt me, which is good. I'm just going to chip away at him as best as I can. Um, so I'm going to throw away the sword here because there's no way I'm ever going to play two attack cards in a turn against this guy because he's always going to counter the first uh, card. So I'm going to play the sword first on purpose to trash it and then attack him, which is better than if I did it in the other order. And now I'm going to trash this first attack and hit him for two. And now I won the fight. Yay. Um, all right, so now I kind of have to use up some of these heals uh, to explore a little bit more, but that's fine because I want to heal. Um, so I've got a level three griffin there, a level three pixie, and then I'm going to... No, no one's hiding behind there. Okay, so I'm going to have to fight someone at level three because uh, that's all I have available to me. Um, griffins, I just have to know, aren't very... Like, as a warrior, you can usually fight a griffin pretty well. So I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, actually, one, one other thing that I could do is use my special ability, which is smash here, and smash a piece of the wall out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Yeah, it, this, is, this is not a pretty game. I, as I mentioned earlier, maybe, maybe for those of you who just tuned in, the art was mostly done. Uh, it's made by one game designer, and the art, I think, is all done by his children, which is kind of charming, but... Uh, yeah, I don't even notice the art anymore. I've played this so much. Uh, so I just smashed that wall. And, okay, there was a level 3 wizard hiding behind there. Um, I think I'm just going to attack the griffin like I immediately, like I originally planned. So. Uh, attacking him. So he just played fly, which... Again, it's hard to tell what that does. The, the card actually goes away when he uses it, but you can click on the little uh, status icon here. And while he's flying, he takes no damage. So what I'm actually going to do is discard my level 1 attack and then draw uh, a new card. Uh, okay, that's cool. So now I can play my sword and then attack him for 2. Uh, and now this turn, um, I should be able to get 4 damage because I'm... I've, I've got these two damage cards plus the extra damage from the sword. So that's one, two, and then the sword, and he's down to two. Uh, and I'll play Stone Skin so that I don't get hurt too bad. Uh, now I'm just going to wait a turn because he's flying. And there we go. Killed him. Uh, so I'm at level 3 now, I gain more health, and now I have a new um, ability in combat, which lets me draw a temporary card, copy of the next card that I play. Uh, and it requires two full combats to, um, to cool down. So that's not just two attacks or two rounds, that's you, you have to fight two more enemies before the ability comes back. And then I get to choose between Flame Slash, which deals four fire damage, and Hamstring, which is... Um, uh, another action card. So these green cards are action cards. I can do one action per turn at the moment. Um, uh, and this one's pretty powerful. Your opponent discards all action cards from their hand and uh, you deal um, free damage. I'm going to pick that because I know for a fact that this genie boss is going to have some action cards that I want to, to force him to discard. So, uh, And that's just something that you learn as you play the game. Uh, by the way, while you're playing, for every monster that you attack, and this is permanent, if you hit the X button up here and look at the bestiary, um, it will it'll give you tips on the different kinds of monsters you faced. So like for that Asuri tracker, it says play a weak card uh, into her avoid each turn so that you can then play your stronger attacks, which is what I was doing. Um, and then, uh, you know, take advantage of a turn. You can't damage the griffin to sculpt a strong hand to finish him off once he's done flying. So, it, you know, it gives you hints for these characters and also for the various bosses that you fought. Um, and those are permanent. Those are permanently added to your record there. Um, oh, I guess I'll go ahead and um, I have 20 gold to spend now, so I'm going to see what... Maybe I want to buy something here. Um... 
I'm looking for stuff that might help me against that boss. Um, nothing, not seeing anything there. I could get another hamstring. Um, I could get a healing potion, which removes permanently. It completely heals me, but it removes me. Uh, it's removed permanently from my deck after I use it once. I could just upgrade my health three points, which is usually not a bad option. Uh, and then a bandage is a is a heal as well. Um, I think what I'm going to do um, is actually upgrade another one of my cards to to level two. Spend five gold to do that. And the more you upgrade, the more it costs to spend um, uh, on an upgrade. So it sort of adds up over time. Uh, I'm going to attack this pixie now because I get to reveal two squares if I attack her. Whereas if I attack the um, the wizard, I'm only revealing one square. So that's like you know more cool stuff I could find. So time to attack the pixie. Um, she has a special power where she generates three mana each turn, and she she comes with some pretty badass spells for a low-level character. So I'm just going to play my sword, and I'm going to play my stone skin right now because she's more than likely going to open up with a powerful spell. So stone skin. Yeah, so she just played um, uh, a regular attack, which did no damage because of stone skin, and then fireball, which does eight damage, but reduced to six. Um, oh, wait, maybe I... One, two, three. Hmm. Am I getting that wrong? Oh, no. Um, fireball goes through my damage reduction, I want to say. Yeah, so attack one did no damage. And the fireball bypasses my damage reduction completely because it only reduces um, physical damage. Okay, so now I will just play through, play the hamstring, which does three damage, and play the... Uh, uh, the attack. And then, do, do do there we go. Someone's calling my phone. I will hang that up. Uh, and I'll play the rest of these cards and kill the fairy. Yeah, this does kind of have a nice MS Paint look to it. R.I.P. Um, now I'm really low on health. You can see I have four hit points out of my 21. Fortunately, I can go and pick up these extra heals. Now I have every, almost every possible um, square uh, revealed. I could smash the wall and reveal that last square in the corner, but there's, there's not going to be anything there. Uh, there's, no, there's never any, any hidden squares. Um, I'll check out this last... Um, oh, okay. Uh, so this is Colossus Smash. This is a pretty good early card to have as a warrior. Um, play this only if you have no action cards in play, and I only have one action card anyway, deal eight damage, and then you lose all of your ability to play further action cards. Um, I'm going to buy that, because eight damage is a lot. And uh, I guess I'll fight this wizard. Hopefully I survive. Um, if I do survive, uh, so you get, you get the number of experience points equal to the level of the monster you beat, so if I beat the mage at level 3, I know that I'm going to get 3 hit points, which is going to then get me up to 7 experience, and then take me to level 4. I'll completely heal, I'll get a new power. So uh, I'm just going to fight this dude right now. So he, he starts with an equipment card in play, Staff. Uh, when you gain mana, deal 1 physical damage for every 2 mana you've gained. Um, so as he gains mana, I, I get... Hurt. Uh, I'm going to try a hamstring on him uh, and then an attack. And now he's already almost dead, which is good. Um, he cast Frostbolt on me, which means my physical damage is reduced by one, so this attack isn't going to do anything. Um, I'm going to play Stone Skin. I'm going to attack him anyway, and then hopefully the damage reduction is enough to keep me from getting hurt next turn. Yes. Um, I could win this in one turn by playing, using my special power here. I could uh, double up my attack here uh, and with my special power. I don't want to waste my special power, though, because I want to use it on the genie boss character. Um, so I'm just going to play the sword. 
play that. And hopefully he doesn't kill me next turn, but he might. No, he didn't pull a fireball, so that's great. So I'll just Colossus smash him. He's dead. Uh, but I could have lost that, that round if I'd gotten unlucky. Um, I am gonna just get six more health uh, to my baseline. Um, okay, the last thing I could do is fight this Goblin Hoarder. Uh, I would get a little bit more experience, but it wouldn't be enough to level me up. Um, hoarders, if you've killed them fast enough, uh, do uh, give you a lot of gold. So if there was something I really wanted to buy, I might do that. Uh, but I think I want to uh, play it safe and not take any uh, damage before I fight this boss. So I'm like newly level 4, I'm fully leveled up. Um, I have 16 gold. Um, I'm going to use 10 of that to just upgrade yet another one of my attack cards. Um, so now I think I have more than half my attack cards are above level 1. Uh, and I have that Colossus Smash. Uh, my plan going into this battle is to... Um, is to draw, is to do use, use double strike on Colossus Smash so I can do 18 damage in one turn to the genie. So we're gonna fight him now. Oh, this is perfect. I actually drew a Colossus Smash uh, just to begin with. Um, so I don't think the genie has any of these, but some characters have cards that will react to cards that you play. Um, so a lot of the times you wanna play your most powerful card last. Uh, so I'm just going to play my two attacks. That's fine. Uh, now I'm going to use my special power to double up Colossus Smash. So I'm going to play this, and you're going to see he's going to go, instead of from 27 down to 19 health, he's going to go from 27 down to uh, 11 health because I've doubled it up. Oh, I played it. Well, just gave me an extra cop. There we go. So... Um, so there we have it. I've already got the boss down to almost a third of his health, which is good because he has one of the worst freaking cards in the game. It's called Three Wishes. It presents your opponent with three options, and they have to choose one. So I have to either give him an extra card, I have to heal him ten points, or I have to gain four curses. Um, to explain what that means, uh, plus one card means he gets an extra card in his hand. That's super powerful and could really mess me up. Um, heal 10 is self-explanatory, and um, gain four curses means I would get four useless cards in my deck, which has only like 12 cards in it total, so that would completely, it would mean one out of every like three cards that I draw are useless. Um, I'm going to go with heal 10, actually. Even though that seems like healing a lot, I did just do a lot of damage to him. This pretty much just evens out the fight. Um, uh, so, and we got lucky. Haste has a 10% chance of giving him two turns in a row. It didn't, it didn't go off. Otherwise he'd have a little status icon saying he was going to get two turns. So, um, I can do five damage to him next turn. It's not enough to kill him. If it were, I would have just said, yeah, give him one card and then I would kill him next turn. But I'm going to heal him 10, make that wish. He's back up to 21 now. Um, just attack spam him. He just attacked me a bunch. Another three wishes. Um, minus one action this fight. I'm going to do that. Even though it means I can't play my stone skin anymore, it's better than giving him an extra card. It's better than, than getting those curses. So I'm going to play sword. Hopefully sword will give me the edge that I need over that guy to, um, to take him out. And then I couldn't play that action, so I'm just going to all right, so I do extra damage because of Sword. Hopefully he doesn't pull another Wish on me. Oh, he just played Ward, which gives him eight, like a magical shield of eight. Ugh. All right, so I got to bust through his shield first, play all those. Fortunately, I'm doing a fair amount of damage per turn now that I've got the Sword in play. Ugh. Um... I'm gonna go minus one card this fight, so I have to discard one. Another wish! Oh shit. Um I don't wanna have one card per turn because that means my uh I guess I'll gain those curses. Christ. Alright, hopefully I get lucky. I got a Colossus Smash, that's perfect. I'm gonna I'm just gonna kill him now. Alright. 
And that's the curse card, by the way. It just does nothing. It's just junk in your hand. Um, so I killed him. I got 30 gold, which is a lot in this game. Uh, and I got 16 uh, hit points. Um, I think you get his level squared for a boss. So he's level 4, so I get 4 squared, 16 hit points. Uh, now I get to choose my bonus, um, an equipment slot or an action slot. Um, I tend to, for a warrior, I tend to prefer equipment over actions, so uh, uh, mostly because warrior action cards aren't super great, uh, but the equipment cards are really good. So getting uh, an equipment slot means I get to start my battle with any equipment that I choose. So I'm going to gain that equipment slot. Um, I could go through and purchase stuff just kind of sitting around here, uh, but... Um, I'm not going to do that. I didn't love anything that was lying around. Um, I could upgrade some more, but I'm just going to go to the next dungeon. Uh, what that means is uh, um, I can use that 36 gold on whatever better shops are in the next level. So there's three levels to, to Dream Quest, and then you get to the final boss, who's the Lord of the Dream. Um, technically, you win just by getting to the boss. Uh, and then you have achievements for taking him down a certain amount of, of hit points. Uh, and, I, you know, I've played Dream Quest hundreds and hundreds of times. I've beaten the final boss exactly once. He has a thousand hit points. It's, it's ridiculous. He has these incredible powers. You have to have a really exceptional character to, to beat the final boss. Um, and it's okay if you never do. Um, easy for me to say, though, because I beat him once. <laughs> um... So when you go to a new level of a dungeon, you get to choose a talent. Um, as you play the game, you unlock more talents just globally. But I have the basic ones here right now. Um, I can get 30 gold. I can gain an action. I can gain another equipment slot for two equipment slots, which could be very powerful. If I pick up a powerful piece of equipment, I could start with, um, uh, with two. So... Um, Let's go, oh, and then I can train, I can level up a card from my deck, and I can gain magic, which doesn't matter for a warrior. Um, I am going to, I'm going to take a chance and go with that equipment. Two equipment slots can be super useful for a warrior. Um, okay, one second. I'm getting a text message here. I'm just going to respond to it very quickly. All right. All right. So I do the thing where I go around. All right, so I could take that health and like kind of burn it to explore some more. I could use my smash to explore some more too. I think I'm gonna do that actually. I'm gonna smash that. All right, so that's a level six troll. I'm level five and that's a level five goblin mechanist. So I'm gonna fight the goblin mechanist. Uh, but first I'm gonna look at this store. Um, Wrath of God, uh, draw five cards, discard all non-attack cards from your hand. That's, that can be a very powerful spell for a warrior to cast. Um, but also, I don't have any magic points right now, so that wouldn't be very helpful. Troll hide can be good. This is just a plus two. Um, it's two. Uh, I gain two health at the start of my turn, and I can play it over and over again, so it builds up over time. Uh, and then preparation doubles the next time you deal damage, which I could use with, for example, Colossus Smash. Uh, oh, except I can't because Colossus Smash won't trigger if I've already played an action this turn. So there you go. Balance. Gain balance. Let's just fight this guy. Um, Goblin Mechanist. Half the time brilliant, half the time on fire, half the time both. Um, every turn he copies, or he copies any equipment I play. So I have this sword in play from the beginning, so he has a sword in play from the beginning. I'm just going to attack spam him. All 
All right, so he built a Cloak of Invisibility, which it's kind of like that Asuri Tracker. It, it, it cancels my first card. And then Goblin Ally just deals one damage at the beginning of every turn. So I'm going to, instead of hitting the Play All button down here, um, I want to play these cards in a certain order. So I'm going to burn the level one attack and then hit him twice. And then the, the, the sword comes into play. Okay, now he has Boots of Speed, which uh, he draws an extra card and gains an action. Um, so here we have um, uh, uh, an interesting situation. So I'm going to burn the first card that I play. But if I play an action, I'm going to lose my action point for the turn. Uh, so it wouldn't make sense to play an action to burn unless I really wanted to play one, that attack card, but I don't. So I'm going to burn the level one attack. And then it's basically my choice which of these two I want to play here. Um, hamstring or Stone Skin. Um, I'm going to play Stone Skin because he's doing a lot of damage to me from different sources, and Stone Skin is really strong against that. Um, but I'm going to keep the hamstring in my hand because it does three damage and I can play it next turn. So I'm going to play Stone Skin and then just go. So he's just attacked me a whole bunch, and I don't know if you're paying attention, but he did zero damage to me that turn, which is awesome. Uh, I'm going to burn that level one attack. I'm going to hit him with everything I have. All right, he's got me all the way down to seven hit points, but I can kill him this turn. Um, he has uh, prevents the next three physical damage to be dealt to him, but he only has four hit points. So he basically has seven hit points at this point. Uh, so I'm going to burn this. I'm going to play Colossus Smash, which does eight, and we'll kill him. Ta-da! All right, take that health. Medusas really suck. I hate fighting them, so I'm just going to... Oh, I hate Wraiths, too. What are you going to do? My god. Um, this is a hard game. Okay. Troll hide. Preparation. Um, if I recall correctly, um, Wraiths rely on action cards to, like, get rid of... to make you discard your entire hand. Uh, but if, if I have damage reduction or something like it up, it doesn't actually fire. Also, that's level 5. I, otherwise, I have to fight some level 6 people, and that sucks. So I guess I just have to fight this Wraith with only 13 hit points. I'm probably going to die, uh, but we'll see what happens. Oh, this is good. So, um, oh no, they take half damage from physical, which means I'm basically screwed here. Um, unless I manage to get a couple of Colossus smashes in. Yeah, I'm going to die. That's that's just it. I'm going to play my Stone Skin. These attacks won't do anything at all. Because he takes half damage and it rounds down. Ugh. Um, I'm going to double my Colossus smash just on the off chance that uh, I manage to kill him in this battle. Soul Crush. Discard two cards. Nope, yeah, I'm dead. I kind of knew that going in. Uh, but I got some achievements. Uh, <laughs> achievements seem kind of silly, um, except that they give you access to new cards. So um, I get um, uh, a new talent uh, access. I get access to a new talent when you get to the next floor, that whole talent choosing thing. Um, oh, sorry, no, I get an access to the talent on the first floor. Uh, by defeating the genie, I get access to a card called Muhammad, um, and then by reaching the second floor, um, I gain all characters gain one additional health on level up, which is actually really powerful. And then I've got these points, so you know it scores me on my points uh, uh, via points on how I did. Uh, it's mostly based on monsters killed and floors cleared, uh, and then these points add up over time. So you get a high score on an individual run, but your points are also cumulative. Um, what that means is you can go to the achievements sc uh, screen and find achievements that you don't think you maybe would be able to easily get and then um, unlock them with your points. It's kind of like a little store. Uh, and why would you want to do this? Well, if there's a card that you really need or a ability that you really need, but, uh, um, uh, but it's tied to an achievement that you don't think you can 
ha hack, you know, that you don't think you can make happen, uh, you can just buy the achievement instead. Uh, and then you'll get that card or ability. So, um, but I don't have enough money to, to buy anything right now. Uh, and if we look at the best area, we can see this is every monster that we fought. So we've got little tips on all of these. Um, and then it also, on the next screen, lists the genie, and it tells you, like, hey, try to pick the least damaging witches you can. Things involving cards and curses are particularly dangerous. So you can tell, so that's where I picked up this, that strategy from, uh, you know, I didn't want to reduce my cards, add cards to him, or give me curses. So that's why I picked action points and healing. Uh, so we're going to play again. Um, I don't know if I'll play a warrior again. I think I'll, I'll, I'll we'll mix it up. I'll show you. Um, I think the next one I should do is uh, a thief. Um, thieves are uh, um, they come with their own special um, ability. In this case, it's called find treasure. Every four combats, you can spawn a treasure chest, which is kind of cool. Um, different classes. Uh, oh yeah, so now I can start with a talent, which is nice. So I can gain five health, or I can gain two mana, or I can level up a card. If I look at my deck here, maybe I want to level up. No, I'm just going to gain five health to start. Um, and if you look at my deck here, um, this is actually an, an action focused. So these are, there. I have green action cards in here. I apologize for anybody who's red, green, colorblind. It really super sucks. Uh, I don't know why he chose those colors. Um, but uh, slice deals a damage and then you draw a card. So I have two of those. Um, and then Backstab deals one damage plus one damage for each action card in play. So as a, as a thief, something you would do like as an early strategy is play Slice two times and then Backstab. And that does one, two, three, and then four, five total damage um, uh, on, on top of that because you have those extra action cards. So thieves, generally speaking, you want to be action focused with. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is use my special ability to find a treasure and open up that treasure chest. Uh, corrosive slash deals two damage. I'm not going to pick that up just yet. I don't want to dilute my deck too much. I'd like to have as many action cards. Uh, you know, the, the I'd like the percentage of action cards in my deck to be pretty high. Um, okay, got some, I could purchase new actions, which is actually really helpful for a thief. Um, okay. What's in this one? Oh, here's a bunch of action cards. So something that you have to understand also is that just like you start with different starter, uh, decks, uh, for the different classes, the, there's also a greater chance of certain cards showing up. So if I'm playing a warrior, it's not going to offer me very many, you know, spells to buy. Um, as a as a thief, it's going to give me way more choices of action cards to buy. So the so the um, the stores and the draws um, are kind of balanced on a per class level. Um, swiftness is a great card. You gain two action points, which is awesome, uh, and then draw a card. Um, circle is great too. It seems like it doesn't do much. You draw a card and gain an action, and then at the end of the turn, you draw a card and gain another action. But you draw two cards. That's very powerful. Um, and also, building up your action points is important as as a thief. Uh, but I can't afford any of that right now. Looks like I have to at least eat one of these health things. So I'm just going to go ahead and all right. Two level one monsters. I like to start with the griffin. So uh, we're going to slice. I draw an extra card. Here's backstab right here. So it's one damage plus one for the action card I already have in play. That's two damage. And I kill him in one turn. Nice. We'll explore. Uh, monasteries. Monasteries are my favorite stores. Uh, your first time is free and you get to permanently delete a card from your deck. Monastery is the best thing to find on a map. Uh, deleting cards is so, so powerful. Uh, so I'm just going to delete one of my level 1 attacks, uh, and then as soon as I have 10 gold, I'm going to come back and delete a level 1 attack again. Uh, that way I'll have a nice, tight deck that will uh, deal a lot of damage. 
Uh, so I'm going to fight this pixie. I'm going to hold on to ba uh, to backstab. Uh, hopefully I'll pull an action card next turn. I did not. That's okay. I'll just play these two cards and kill her anyway. And now I'm level two. Um, I'm going to take this Swiftness card, uh, gain two, draw a card, because not only is that a good card, but it's an extra action card, which means I have the, um, the chance to make my backstab that much more powerful. Looks like we're fighting the genie again, which is lucky because it's nice to see how you use different um, uh, strategies for, di for the same boss with different classes. Um, Kick is another action card. I might pick this one up. Uh, your, it forces your opponent to discard a random card. I'm just going to go for it. So now if we look at my deck, I have almost, you know, I'm like a third, maybe more than a third um, action cards, which is, which is what I'm hoping for. I don't want to fight that level three warrior guy yet. Uh, I got another store here, nothing I particularly want in there. Although Great Bow can be good, you deal an extra damage, damage for each action card you play. Um, the Lemonade Stand uh, helps you improve your base stats. Uh, the first one is a free choice. Um, I'm not going to do any of them right now. Uh, sometimes I'll be like, you know, two experience points away from leveling up, and then I can like go here, get the free experience, and then I also essentially get a free heal out of that too. So I'm just going to wait until I need that resource. Um, level three vampire bat. I think I can probably, I can, I can hack it against level three vampire bat. I'm going to do that right now even though I'm only level two. Uh, so I'm gonna play Swiftness, which draws a card. I'm gonna play Slice, which draws a card, and then I'm gonna play my two attacks. Uh, I'm gonna play Kick, which makes him discard a card. So he has two cards in his hand right now. So I'm gonna hit Kick. Now he only has one card in his hand. So he's pretty much crippled next turn. Yeah, he just played that one attack. Uh, I'm gonna attack him twice. He just vampire, he did the vampire bite, so he's back up to five health, but that's okay. I will backstab. Now he's down to one health, so I should be able to kill him this next turn. There we go. Uh, now I have 10 gold, well, 17 gold, so I'm going to go up to the monastery and forget another useless attack. Uh, so now I have four out of 10 cards that are um, action cards. Uh, I'll take some of these heals. Level two mage, level three wearer. Um, I only need two. I only need one hit uh, experience point to um, to get to level three. So I'm just going to attack this mage, who will give me two experience points for beating him. Uh, and he cast frost on me, which means that I do minus one damage per attack. So I only did one damage to him with those two cards. Uh, and now he's dead. Easy enough. Uh, I have a new combat ability, which just prevents all damage until my next turn. Pretty powerful. Um, I can gain an extra action per round, so I have two by default. Um, or I can get another circle card. I'm going to get another circle card, actually. Uh, lots of action cards that draw new cards uh, are a good... Basically, drawing more cards and burning through your deck is a good strategy for a thief. So I'm going to I'm going to pick that and I'm going to spawn a treasure and I'm going to open that up. Another backstab, um, having two backstabs is not actually very helpful, so I'm just going to ignore that. Um, and let's fight this level 3 wyvern. Uh, I will slice him and uh, I'm going to actually just let the next turn go because if I played um, I can't play kick because I only have, I don't have any action points left. Uh, and I could play backstab right now, but backstab would only do two damage. I bet I'm going to draw, well, I might draw like, if I'm lucky, I'll draw one of my action cards that draws another card. And maybe that gives me an action card. I don't know. Um, I'm willing to take that chance. All right, so I'm, oh, I don't, I only have two cards. Ah, yeah, okay, I suck. Um, so 
Uh, I'm poisoned now, which means I take two earth damage at the start of my turn, um, and then next turn I will be poisoned level one, and I'll take one earth damage. So I'm going to kick him and backstab. And play all my attack cards again. Poison can really add up over time. It's actually very, very dangerous. So I'm going to do circle and swiftness and then attack him twice. There we go. I found a treasure chest. Well, all right then. Frost slash. Deal two frost damage. Eh, don't care. Two lemonade stands. This is actually very um, unusual. Uh, I'm going to take this heal. Um, man. Um, I guess I'll take the free experience. I guess I didn't really need to take that heal. I'll take the free experience, um, which will immediately level me up. Um, I can choose between backstab and strike here. I also get a new, an extra card each turn. So I'm going to take strike. Strike costs two actions uh, and deals five damage. And as you level it up, it costs even more actions, but it deals uh, even more damage. So I'm going to take strike. Strike's a good high level card for a thief. Um, now, I, now th this is where planning can come into place. Sometimes you can get to level five and actually out-level the boss. Um, I can only get three experience points from the warrior. I can get another three for free from this second lemonade stand, so that's six points. And then I could spend 10 gold. Yeah, actually, I could, I could over-level the, the genie. I think I'm going to do that. So... First thing I'm going to do is just fight the warrior while I have my full health here. Uh, he has a shield and a sword, so he's got a 20% attack chance of dodging my attacks. And, uh, and he's got the sword, which we already saw how that worked. So yeah, I'm going to slice him, and then uh, backstab, and then attack twice. Now I'm going to, so I have one attack point right, or one action point right now. I'm going to circle, um, and I still don't have enough to play strike, but that's okay. I'm just going to attack him twice, and then because of circle, now I have two of those points. Uh, I'm going to play swiftness, which gets me even more attack points, um, and now I'm going to play strike. Strike deals five damage. And the cool thing is it totally bypasses his um, shield because the shield is only effective against attack cards, which are red. Uh, this is an action card. So, boom, he's dead. Uh, and I'll explore around a little more. And that's the dungeon. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and hit 12. Uh, spend 5 gold. Oh, no, I have to spend... Oh, maybe I have. To, I can spend five gold at this one too. No, Ugh, I messed up. Um, I didn't re realize that it was going to cost me twenty gold. I thought it would be like fifteen. Well, you win some, you lose some. Maybe I can kill another. Uh, nope, twenty-five to kill another card. So I'm just gonna. I guess I'll just fight the genie. Um, I'm pretty happy with this hand, so I'm not going to go and add dilute my my or with that deck. I'm not going to dilute the deck at all unless I see something. Now, all right. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do kick because he's holding two cards. I know one of those cards is make a wish, so I have a 50 50 chance of making him discard the wish card. He did not discard the wish card, so all right, fine. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to discard one of these slices and all right so he plays his wish um this time i don't want to get rid of my actions because uh those are really important to me as a thief um so um oof. i guess i'll gain the curses because i at least have cards that help me burn through my my deck so play swiftness i got a curse play slice i got strike all right, attack, fine. Mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prevent damage next turn. Hopefully I get, ah, oh, got a curse. This is not going well at all. 
Um, I'm just going to discard and start new. Ugh, this is no good. I'm going to give the genie an extra card, I guess. I don't want too many curses. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm dead. This is this is not going well. I was hoping I could over over level him. Some bosses are way harder with certain classes too. It just sometimes you just roll a bad starting dungeon. Ugh. Oh wow, two wi Ugh. yeah, poison me. Fine. Yeah, I'm I'm so dead. Yep, that's it. I'm gone. So I did not manage to beat the first boss that time, but fortunately I got more points and I got some more achievements. So now my character's finding an additional health pack on each floor and I also gain access to the crumble talent, which uh, I'll explain uh, in a bit. Um, all right, I just want to take you through like the four base classes. So let's do um, wizard next. Um, Crumble removes all the walls on the dungeon floor, which is kind of trippy and is really helpful for a character who needs to attack certain enemies in a certain order and like make sure that, like really make sure of that. Um, it also gives you access to essentially every single um, store and power up on the board immediately. So that can be a really powerful way to um, to power up a character really soon, but also getting extra mana for a wizard is obviously a really good idea. Um, but I'm going to go with Crumble, because that's just interesting. Uh, and I also have this teleport ability. Teleport will just teleport me to a random spot on the map. Um, but So now that I've crumbled the walls, I can just reveal the entire um, map. This also lets me see who the boss is which in this case is a vampire, uh, and that lets me plan ahead of time. So I'm just revealing all the map tiles that I can. All right, I've revealed every map tile. So let's take a look at the treasure. Um, gain six mana, yes. So now I have to be managing my mana as a resource. I start with two, but there's no cap to how much mana I can have in a fight. Um, and it doesn't, it just resets to your base mana every fight. Flame Charge is a blue mana card, and you gain three mana and deal three damage. I like that card, too. Let's look at our deck, though, for a second. I'm, I've got all these mana draws, uh, and I have these two fairly weak starting spells, uh, Jasper's Jarring Jolt. It just does one of each kind of elemental damage. Uh, but it's pretty cheap, and it does four damage most of the time. So um, I'm going to take Flame Charge, because it's a good way to get dam give damage and also... Um, uh, and also get mana. Uh, let's see what's in the store here. Um, oh, Acid Lance is normally a, something that I would totally go for, except I happen to know that vampires are immune to poison. So that's not going to help me for the boss. Blur can be good. Um, it means that I take half damage from physical attacks. Um, that can be helpful. And there's a Flame Charge, which I already have. Um, shock is a good, can be a good spell. You deal four damage, uh, four electrical damage, and then draw the next spell card. Um, again, more acid. More acid. Another, this is, a, this is also acid damage, corrosive slash, and then a heal. So I'll probably purchase that shock at some point, maybe. Uh, and then we have the monastery. So we take that free upgrade. I'm gonna, I could kill either my level one attack or my level one mana. I think I'm gonna kill my level one attack though, because wizards don't really do super well bashing things. Um, and then I also get a free upgrade at the anvil here. Um, and I'm gonna upgrade my, um, one of my mana cards. Um, all right, so now I gotta find someone level one to fight, uh, like this level one goblin. So I started with two. Uh, I played my level one mana, which gains me two mana. Um, so now I have four. Uh, and I can cast my spell and kill him. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see. Level two zombie. Um, I guess I'll just fight this zombie then. Um, so 
So zombies are kind of weird. They have a they have a special card unique to their race called Bite, and uh, I gain five ranks of Diseased, which basically means I only have five turns. In four turns, I'm going to die. Kind of sucks. But fortunately, zombies are weak. I can kill them pretty handily. Uh, again, normally I choose Acid Lance, but it's useless against the boss. But I already have, I don't know, my, my, my deck is already really mana heavy, so I am going to go with Acid Lance, because at least once I get past the Vampire, I can, I can use it on non-Vampire characters. Um, Alright, let's fight this other level 2 zombie. No, actually, let's fight a level 3 skeleton. Let's, let's live, live dangerously. So we put up a shield just now, but I'm going to hit it with my spell, gain some more mana, just burn through those. Alright, he's almost dead. Hopefully he doesn't put up another shield, and he doesn't. I'm going to cast Acid Lance. It doesn't do immediate damage, but it does poison him, so it means at the start of his next turn he's going to die. Ta-da! Um, Frostbolt will deal damage and then also chill your opponent, which reduces the amount of damage they do to you, physical damage they do to you. Um, or I could get that shock. Um, I'm actually going to go for shock on this one. I like being able to draw extra cards. Now, the next thing I want to do before I fight the vampire is get up to level 4. Uh, so I could do that by fighting, uh, I need 7 XP. So yeah, I have to fight all 3 of these guys, otherwise I'm only going to get 5 or 6 XP. So I usually start with the strongest character first. I think in this case it's probably the Kobold, funny enough. Because um, you want to fight the strongest enemy for your net, for your plan when you have the most health. So, Alright, well, got a lot of mana. Oh, I have a new special power too, uh, which is to gain 10 mana. Uh, I'm going to save that for the boss though. All right, that was pretty easy. Fight this guy next. Oh, I should have healed, but he's probably not going to kill me. It's okay. There we go. All right, now I'm going to heal up before I fight this um, zombie. All right, back up to full health. Fighting the zombie now. Uh, this game is for both iOS and PC. I'm playing the PC version. Uh, I think it's on. I think it's cross-platform on PC too, so it plays on Mac, Windows, Linux. Um, I recommend it on iPad. Frankly, it's just a, it makes sense. It's a touch game because it's a card game. Uh, all right, so now I get to choose either um, get a mana card or cleanse my deck. I'm absolutely going to cleanse my deck and I'm going to drop one of these attack cards again. Um, so now I have a very spell-oriented deck. Um, there's nothing I want from any of these stores. I could delete... You know, I'm going to spend 10 gold and delete my last level 1 attack. So now I have a very tight deck going in to fight this dude. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually delete my um, Acid Lance, which might Give me an edge over the vampire, actually. I think I'm going to... Mm, no, because the, the Acid Lance will be really, really helpful in future... Uh, against future bosses. And also what this means is I'm not going to have to fight the vampire on any of the other levels. So I'm likely to fight a boss who is not immune to poison next. So Acid Lance would be great to have. So here we go. Um... So Jasper's Jolt did three damage because he's immune to acid. So okay, so he played his Enthrall card, which lets him pick a card from my hand, add it to his hand, and then play it, and then it goes back to my discard. So he just used my own shock against me, which sucks. And he played Vampire Bite a bunch, so he's healing a lot. 
Um, and I'm not going to play, I'm not even going to bother playing Acid Lands because all that's going to do is uh, reduce my mana. Oof, I don't have a way to, yeah, he's going to, he's going to kill me. That's, well, so it goes. That's the way the dream quest crumbles. Uh, we start with an additional three gold now, and we get an additional one health. Um, also, I can now afford to purchase um, a level one achievement, so I could start out with an extra starting mana by purchasing this one. Um, I could start with an extra health, um, start with more gold. Oh, no, not that one. I think that's all the ones I can afford right now. But I don't really care about any of those. It's just a late, in the late game, it really makes sense to unlock certain cards as you play. So we're going to play the last of the four um, classes, the Priest. Uh, the Priest uh, gets a special power where he can reveal tiles on the board. Um, and he's very... Uh, he's a hard class to play. I don't like him very much, frankly. Um, I'm going to have him start with extra mana. Um, if we look at his hands... And his deck. He's got plenty of attack cards. He's got one mana card. And then he's got this um, this thing which gives him, it heals him for health, and any overhealing becomes a shield, which is pr a pretty good defensive card early game. And then he has this prayer card. A prayer card is a card that um, you set it to go, and then it has a timer on it, and when the timer's done, it does uh, a certain, it has an effect relative to the amount of time that it has that you set it for. So I can do five, 15 damage in five turns, or one da three damage in one turn, for example. Um, they are, I, I don't know, I find building a deck around prayer very difficult, which is one of the reasons why, um, you know, Benedict the Cruel, the Cruel Priest, um, is a tough one. Uh, so let's fight this level one spider. Okay, so this is good. I can play this, and now I have four shield, which is great. Uh, he's not going to be able to hit me. I'm probably just going to kill him this next turn. Yep. And here's a store. Um, I could get a poison action, which could, which is actually really good. Poison someone three, because that's six damage over the course of three turns. You do three plus two plus one. Um, I could get another prayer, or I could get this thing that gives me mana and health. But I'm, I don't have the money for any of that right now. I'm going to play my Oracle and see what's over here. Um, I don't really want to fight that Mud Man, so I'm just going to go through... Oh, level 3 zombie. Give me a break. Okay, level 2 Vampire Bat. I could probably swing a level 2 Vampire Bat. Gelatinous Cube! Gelatinous Cube is our boss. He eats everything, including you. I love the Gelatinous Cube on principle. Um, Jasper's Jolt. I'm going to get that because it's a good... Uh, well, I'll come back later if I need it. And then in this store, we get the Psychic Blast. We get another Venom. I think I actually want to buy both of those Venoms. I think that could be really powerful. So let's fight this Vampire Bat. Again, I overheal to have a shield, which is really lucky. Play those cards. Early fights aren't super interesting. You're very often just kind of burning through, hitting the play all button over and over. You didn't even get a chance to knock that prayer out. Um, I will take this heal spell. Um, wisdom, gain three mana, draw a card. That's always nice, because basically if a card lets you draw another card, you're not really diluting your deck so much. So I'm going to take that. Um, piety removes a counter from every prayer in play, which is helpful. But like I said, I'm not good at managing prayer decks. Uh, all right, let's fight this ooze now. So he just used Digest, which exiled a card at random from my hand. So that attack card is gone forever. Oh, gone forever for this um, particular battle. Um, yeah, I'll cast Heal and just get that extra point back. So he's actually, like, trimming my deck for me, which is kind of interesting. 
He's also healing one each turn, so I really need to like hit him with a lot of damage at once. Fortunately, I have the prayer for that. Um, if he has seven hit points, so I'm going to set this prayer to take three turns. That way, in three turns, if as long as I'm still alive, he's dead. Yep, and I'm barely doing any damage to him, but next turn, he's dead. Yep, kill him with that prayer. So that was, that's a good example of why prayer is helpful. Um, some more spells here. Haste can be good. You draw two cards and you might get an extra turn. Um, let's just fight and level up. So I'm going to fight this giant spider. Heal up again. Discard the mana card, sure. Now I'm poisoned. Play the wisdom card. All right, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Prayer of Violence. I'm going to set it to one turn, which will do three damage next turn and kill him. I'm going to heal in the meantime. He's forcing me to discard, and the Prayer kills him. Um, upgrade two cards from my deck, or gain two magic. I'm going to upgrade two cards. Uh, I'm going to upgrade that mana card and one of my attacks. Um, and I have a new combat ability which deals 10 fire damage all at once, which is really helpful because priests don't tend not to do a lot of damage at one time. Okay, gonna fight this dude. Just put up his shield. Now he has seven shield points, so... Uh, I'm gonna just set this to do 12 damage in four turns. I think I'm just gonna have to like try and stay alive until then. Fortunately I have my, my healing cards, so. And now he's dead. Um, the Oasis will um, heal you completely for free once. Um, I might not need that right now though. I think I can just pull, yeah, I can just pull health this way. Um, and a monastery, yay. So get rid of some of our trash cards there. Um, inner focus, draw two cards, discard a card. That's always a nice one. I'll, I'll just take that. It just helps you sift through your cards a little more. Um, and I will take Jasper's Jolt because I'm having trouble doing a ton of damage um, to people. So uh, let's fight this zombie. Uh, let's make the prayer go off. Um, nine damage seems good. Inner focus, discard that, cast attack, and now he's going to be dead next turn. Got him. Um, I will just increase my... No, no I'll, I'll take another wisdom card, I think. Okay, so fighting the gelatinous cube. Um, this is an okay deck. I bet I can find something... Oh yeah, that's right, I wanted to get the, um, the Venom cards. I want to be like a poisoning priest. So let's let's do that. That's a good way for a priest to really rack up damage as long as you're fighting someone who isn't um, uh, immune to poison. So I'm going to poison him. Oh no, he played Slurp. What Slurp does is it exiles the card. So fortunately I have a second um, Venom in here somewhere. Now, what I'm going to be doing is, I'm because he might slurp again, I'm going to play my weakest cards that I'm happy to lose first. Okay, now he's poisoned. Um. <coughs> I'm going to play this prayer. 
Um, I'll do a bunch of damage to him. Let's just do 15 damage in five turns. And now he slurped my... Um, he slurped away my, my attack spell. That's okay. Okay, he slurped that mana, which is fine. I have plenty of mana in my deck. Again, just playing my weak cards first. Venom. Okay, did 15 damage to him. I'm going to do get him down below 10, and then I'm going to use my special power here. Deal, deal 10 fire damage. Hey, he's dead. And I level up. I can gain 5 mana and draw the next spell card, or get soul fire, which does 10 piercing damage, and then gets returned back to my hand when I'm done, which is really, really good. Uh, I'm going to take soul fire because clearly I'm having trouble dealing damage. Um, I could spend some more money and get rid of one more attack card. I think I'm going to do that, actually. I cannot overstate the importance of getting rid of trash cards from your, from your deck. Um, let's see. Equipment slot. Priests don't really do a lot with equipment. Gaining 30 gold could be good. I could just buy some stuff. I could gain some health back. Um, some more mana. Oh, yeah, I'm going to actually um, gain two mana. That way I start with six mana, and that way if I, my starting hand has soul fire in it, I can immediately cast soul fire, which would put me in a really good position. So now I have six to start with. Um, some of these levels have monsters that ambush you, so if you go, um, uh, like, explore around, you might get ambushed by a monster that's much higher level than you want to fight. That sucks when that happens. Mind Seer is a spell that deals five piercing damage or draws two, draws two cards. I like the sound of that. Alright, let's fight this Wyvern. He's level four and I'm level five. We'll wipe the walls with him. Sure, prayer. Poison. Poison him again. Now he's got five poison. Now he's almost dead. I'm going to heal up. Cast this focus. Cast my heal again. And Mind Seer uh, for five damage, and the next turn the poison's going to take care of him. Hey, all right. Level four Usuri Hunter. This guy has a timer. I have 10 seconds to make all my moves, and he also uh, negates my first move, so I'm going to do Wisdom, I'm going to cast this spell, I'm going to Inner Focus, and then... Oh, I lost the ability to finish off that turn. I didn't do it fast enough because I was explaining it to you all. Um, heal, attack... This guy's not too difficult, but you do have to think fast, which is which can be hard. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast that uh, 5 piercing damage, and now I should be able to get him next turn. Um, the prayer goes away, I attack him once, I hit him with the venom, and then the venom's going to kill him next turn. Okay. Um, I could heal up at this point, but I'm going to use these guys first. Um, and I could get four experience points for free. That wouldn't take me to the next level, but that might come in handy later. Let's fight this siren. She's level five. She thinks I'd make a wonderful special friend. Um, inner focus. Get rid of that attack, draw another card, and I'm going to cast these two spells. I'm going to um, attack her twice. So she just cast Beckon. Beckon exiles two cards at random from my hand, so whatever those two cards were, they're gone now. 
and she just healed up, which is, which sucks. But I can poison her, and then the prayer goes off. I can cast Mind Seer for five damage, and then hit her, and she's gone. So this is the game. Um, I could keep going. Uh, it gets. Oh, I just got ambushed by a level six ambusher, which really sucks. Um, I'll trash this attack, I'll draw another card, attack, attack, and then um, I'm going to use my 10 fire damage power because she outlevels me. And I need every advantage I can get. I kind of have to kill her really soon. Um, this prayer isn't really going to have enough time to go off, so I'm just going to trash it. I'm going to heal and hope that she doesn't kill me next turn. Nope, I'm super dead. If she, if I had drawn Soul Fire, I could have made it out of this situation. But alas, I did not. Um, so yeah, I got a couple more achievements. Uh, I've got access to a card called Sift now, and um, and I could even purchase, um, you know, more talents or something. Uh, I could go through and kind of shop for things I want to unlock now that I have three hundred gold. Um, so that's that's Dream Quest. Um, I think. The thing that I like most about it, so there's, you only start with four classes, but eventually there are, um, you unlock, I think, 10 or 12 classes, and some of them are very, very unique and interesting, um, and they're all really fun to play. I don't think there's a, a single truly boring class. I have my preferences, but I was even having fun with the priest there. Um, it's a very hard game. It's unforgiving. Um, I've played a few hundred times. Let's say I played 300 times. Um, of those times, I probably only made it to the final boss, um, I don't know, 30 times? So like one out of every 10 runs. And like I said earlier, I've only beaten the final boss once. And even that was like a huge, an enormous fluke. Most people will never beat the final boss, and that's okay. He's kind of just meant to be this aspirational challenge. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Dream Quest. Um, I hope I had managed to show you a little bit of what I like about it, um, and, uh, a little bit about, uh, some of the stuff that I do to make it uh, a less harrowing experience for playing. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, and, uh, uh, maybe I'll do another stream sometime soon. Uh, have a good rest of your day, everyone.